thanks to my sense, my husband lives on here and here. Nillian was one of the best memory hunters around. She was so skilled that she had the power to not only wipe memories, but also change the way they unfold. Unfortunately, a powerful corporation wipes out Nillian's memory, but a man named Edge helps her to escape back into the world. The story takes place just after the escape, and it follows Nillian as she attempts to recover her memory while listening to Edge's orders. Nillian's tale is undersold by bland voiceover and uninteresting storyline. Political ideals are so last millennia. You always waste so much saliva! Or is it just when you're on the air? She spends all of her time clambering on top of buildings and participating in terrorist actions brought forth by her savior, Edge. Beyond Nillin, the entire cast of characters lack intriguing personalities due to a dull and obvious script. The idea of creeping into memories is definitely something worth experiencing, but Remember Me opts to explore this venue in the most inane way possible. Everything pushes Nillin into a fight with stiff controls and a customizable pre-made combo system. A customizable pre-made combo system? What is that? Well, Nillin has the option of switching out various combo systems called pressants. Each pressant has a certain trait to it from health restoration to hitting for more damage per hit. You can sort these between the pre-made combos and be prepared to spam the same buttons repeatedly to activate the pressants. That's it. The variety is that you can switch around the pressants for different advantages, but Nillin will always attack in the same fashion. Next up is the automatic platforming elements that always lead down a direct path to Nillin's destination. Apparently, the challenge is to try to decipher the point at which Nillin will outright fall to her doom because she felt like it. Jumping and grabbing ledges and platforms are all in the hands of the game's mechanics, so when Nillin falls to her death during jumps, you cannot help but feel jibbed that you had no part in her demise. The ceiling of the coffin for Remember Me is the rewriting of memories. Much like watching a show on a DVR, players can rewind and fast forward through a cutscene. Glitches will appear that Nilla can activate to knock over a bottle or uncuff a dangerous suspect. That is great and all, but the choices of how the memories pan out are already predetermined. A prop will pop up on screen and give Nilla her goal. Make this person kill this other person. You have no choice in how the events pan out at all. And that's where Remember Me fails at its ultimate goal of being different. This skill supposedly separates her from the other memory hunters, but she spends most of her time punching guards in the face. It's a shame that the gameplay is repetitive nonsense, because the title is absolutely beautiful. The game is so vain about its sci-fi utopia that it will constantly remind you how gorgeous it is. It's too bad that beauty is skin deep, and everything underneath is as shallow as a grave. Remember Me receives two stars from Geek Citadel, this game wants us to remember it, but I am just fine forgetting all about it. What exactly is Samurai Jazz? Does it follow a jazz musician who has lost his musical soul through a time warp that leads to feudal Japan and must learn the ways of the samurai to achieve his dexterity and spirit? Nah, but you are a samurai who runs around an alternate version of the 1930s where everyone uses swords to fight. Some guy commits seppuku and then your character wakes up across the hall to explore the city. Yeah, that's the gist of the story as far as I saw so we'll just have to run with it. Samurai Jazz takes place in an 8-bit world with the jazz-influenced soundtrack flowing in the background. The hero will move through the streets facing off against blue-suited samurai who can murder in one hit. Our hero can move left and right and up and down to block incoming blows or slash his enemies in half. He can also get vertical to scale walls and leap rooftops to reach otherwise obstructed locations. The key to combat is to avoid being skewered by a crowd of sword welders, or it's time to start the zone over from scratch. The simple nature of the gameplay is what keeps it intriguing. New enemy types will appear as you advance through levels, like the uncaring store patrons who bowl you over, big black guys with bats, or the woman who heard you talking about her giraffe neck. Either that or she's trying to seduce our hero by showing off her skills. Hey, knock it off lady, I'm not interested. The main gameplay element is to fetch stuff for people so that you can get into new areas. That's all you ever seem to fight for, cigarettes and membership cards. I guess cutting down innocent human walls could be dishonorable. Damn that Samurai Code. In all seriousness, Samurai Jazz is an enjoyable title. It could be a little less generic with the story and quest options, but the music is well done and the combat can get addicting. Geek Citadel gives Samurai Jazz 3 stars out of 5. It's not going to woo many players, but if you're looking for a Bushido Blade style beat em up to play for a short time, you've got a reason to spend $3 on this. Many years ago, the Yaw came to a town and devastated it. The people survived and rebuilt the town, and the story of the Yaw lived on as a folktale. 
Now, the Yogg will return in six weeks to terrorize the town, and no one will suspect a thing. You take on the role of a denizen of the town, living a normal life in the weeks before the Yogg returns to cause chaos. What kind of life will you have before the Yogg comes to take it all away? The Yogg is a choose your own adventure party game. Two or four players can drop into the world and take turns selecting various destinations in town. Each destination will lead to a choice that can increase stats like fitness and charm. After gaining new stats, a random event will appear that can be detrimental or helpful to the player. Your character could find a shiny new ring or fall victim to the wiles of a vampire. This can lead to negative stats or even the destruction of one of the locations in town. The beautiful artwork and well-written encounters creates an appealing world. The real factor here is the party element, and the Yaw greatly achieves that objective. If you have some friends over, just sit back and take in the atmosphere and strange events. You will chuckle with your buddies while building your stats and discovering the intricacies of the game mechanics. That was a nice punch though. You can't two physique and two finesse. Yo, fuck John up, yo. <laughs> supposed to do all that. <laughs> it's all about tackling each of the locations and unraveling the stories hidden within while trying to build stats to keep the town together at the end of six weeks. One session can take up to 8 to 15 minutes to complete the first couple of times you play. It's short and sweet when playing, but also short in content as well. It only takes two or more playthroughs to retread stories you have seen in a previous session. By the fifth or sixth encounter, it is possible to see 70% of the events. It's a shame that there isn't enough content to keep players coming back for spontaneous party fun. The Yogg is a great idea that needed a little more time in the oven. A unique and fun gameplay experience that's geared toward a party environment. It simply lacks the longevity needed to continue coming back to play for the next social event. The Yogg receives 3 stars from Geek Citadel. It is fun for about an hour, and by then you have probably seen everything that it brings to the table. We're giving away 5 copies of the Yogg, so if you're interested, leave a comment below and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks a lot, and see you on the next edition of The 3.